morning good morning it's your boy it's your boy it's harry the internet guy from investment group partners guys once a week once a week four times a month we go live from my personal page so we can help introduce group portfolio club investing to everybody hey man what about investing what about taking my disposable income my disposable dollars my pennies and turning them into investable dollars how do i do that well you guys been watching us hearing us all over the internet and now it's your opportunity to get involved in group portfolio club investing it's a chance for you to do six steps in getting started and turning your pennies into investable dollars you hear me shake my pennies where my pennies at I had to fill them back up. You know why I had to fill them back up? Because I took them to the coin star at the local grocery store, cashed them in, and then reinvested them. See, what we're talking about is finding disposable income so you can turn your pennies, that's what I'm talking about, literally pennies, into investable dollars. My name is Harold Dillon Jr., the internet guy. Good morning to you, 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 you down there, and you up there. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Call your mama, call your daddy, your auntie, your uncle, your brothers, your sisters. Call big mama and them down south. What? Tell them it's Harold Dillon, the internet guy from Investment Group Partners. And we're live, live, live on Facebook for all to see. Hey, guys, listen, we are an investment club. Now, this is live on my page. So if you've never seen me before or if you've seen me before but never heard this, we're talking about Community Investment Club. Right now, you can go on to Facebook. You can find our club. Maybe we've already invited you because it's a private online community made up of retail investors. What we do is we pool our funds together and it gives us greater buying power as a unit. So we're a community of retail investors. Inside of this community is seven different neighborhoods. These neighborhoods are, are group portfolio, uh, managed portfolios. These portfolios have stocks in them that we invest in. That's why behind you see me Bloomberg on the computer. If I go this way, CNBC on the television, we use that for information purposes only. We don't learn from them. We do, we do watch them for active on time or real-time research you see as I slide back there's a ticker tape at the bottom it's scrolling by if you can see that move my computer down that ticker tape right there allows us to see what's going on with the stocks the actual stocks or the securities that we invest in now we don't do options at least we don't I don't teach it we do have people that are part of the community that teach options in fact we got an options event coming up options 2022 y'all got to join us Options 2022, where you learn more about investing. There are different levels of investing. There's different types of investing. We don't care where you go to invest. What we're teaching you is stewardship. We invest. Who are we? Let me start there. Investment Group Partners. In the IGP, Investment Group Partners, is a faith-based organization recognized by the state of Nevada as a nonprofit organization. We're an association or what they like to call a co-op, a co-op, like a, a cooperative. You see them in major cities. They have city gardens. They build parks. Well, we decided to use utilize our strength as a cooperative online and build digital communities. These digital communities are made up for of retail investors, uh, people that want to trade stocks, people that want to grow their business, people that want to learn more and more about being a righteous managing steward of God. And all we do is teach stewardship. That's it. Hallelujah. Good morning. All we teach is stewardship. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for another day's journey, God. We thank you for waking us up this morning, starting us on our way, God. I truly believe that the only reason you woke us up this morning was to finish the work. Finish the work. Hallelujah. No need to complain. No need to moan and groan. No need to have a pity party. God woke us up this morning, giving us an opp another opportunity to do more than we did yesterday, say more than we did yesterday, reach more than we did yesterday. And God, we just actually give us the strength to, and, and the courage uh, and encouragement. Keep encouraging us that we may have victory on today and win a soul, win a soul for Christ that they may ask us the question, what must I do also to be saved? In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey guys, listen, every morning we have what they call opening bell. This is opening bell. It's another why not Wednesday? Why not Wednesday? Why not Wednesday? And every day we have a rhema word. If you've never joined us before, you want to go to Community Investment Club. It's on Facebook. 
Facebook. It's a private, members only, online community made up of retail investors. It's a digital area, but it's where we learn together, grow together, earn together. It's where you see the podcast, the learning. We we uh, trade our stocks through E Trade. E Trade is a brokerage account or a platform that opens up the opportunities for you to do more with your money more with your money my job today is to introduce you to group portfolio club investing my job today is to invite you to join community investment club it's free to join you don't have to upload no credit card information you don't have to download no books buy no cds you don't have to wait for some amazon to deliver something to your house all you got to do is show up we ask that you start with three things so listen i'm gonna give you time if you've never been here before go get you a pen Go get you an ink pen because we have this morning podcast Monday through Friday. We do have it on Saturdays and Sundays. That's the weekend edition. But the markets that we that we're teaching stewardship on because you can have you can use the principles that we're teaching. Reach one, teach one, bring one along. You can use these stu- these principles or these characteristic traits of stewardship that we're teaching if you're trading forex. Doesn't matter. But we don't teach forex. You uh you can use it uh, on cryptocurrency. We we do teach. Uh, the platform on how to navigate through a digital wallet and buying the right coins. We use indicators. So keep in mind, we don't necessarily teach you how to trade, but we teach you how to look for the right information so you can make a wise decision. Everything that we utilize, everything that we implement, everything that we teach is biblically based. So one, you got to have a pen. Guess what number two is? Number two, you got to have a Bible. Don't just believe me. I don't care. I may look trustworthy, but believe the word of God. You got to have something to stand on. So what we do with these principles, we teach, guess what? How to establish, that's getting started, manage and maintain the framework of your family's financial future. So one, you need a pen. Two, you need the word of God. If you don't have a Bible, please let us know. We'll get a Bible sent out to you. We signed up with a lot of Bible organizations and they're willing to drop ship Bibles. All you got to do is text me, tweet me, message me. Hey, my number is 702-901-9128. You can text me your full name and an email address. We'll make sure that the Bibles get out to you. Now, number three. You need a composition book or a journal. Doesn't matter. Get you a journal. The more you invest in this is one of the journals that my family bought me. It says Jeremiah 29, 11 on it. For I know the plans I have for you. Plans to, and not to harm you and plans to give you hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. Hallelujah. So three things. Ink pen. Journal. In the word of God. So every day when God gives us these the ability to have these podcasts, he woke us up to finish the work. He also gives us a rhema word. So if, if you're following us, even though you may not have joined, but you're following us, you know that we give out a rhema word every single day. So the rhema word for today, and we may have even used it. Sometimes God will give us the same word because he wants us to guess what? Show, tell, repeat. Because <laughs> he told me that his people, he said, my people, and that's in the scripture. This is not Harold. I'm just paraphrasing. My people perish because of lack of knowledge. And so the reason why we continue to give knowledge, we continue to give education, we continue to repeat the information is so we want to make certain that you get it. Here come the word again. Bible says in all of thy getting, <laughs> y'all want to finish it? Get an understanding. Glory be unto your name, God. But today's word, hallelujah. I am getting to today's word. Uh, First of all, we are in a 300 day journey. So you have to understand that if you've never followed us before, if you have not been following us, God gave us 300 days to get ourselves together. 300 days to be better. 300 days to be stronger. 300 days to be wiser. And he promised us a manifestation of wealth. Y'all better talk to me. Manifestation of wealth. That means it's going to appear. It's going to show up. As long as we're obedient and follow the rules of engagement based on scripture. Well, we're in day 20 of the next 100 day journey. So we're 200 days in. We've completed 200 days, 220 days. So today, guess what? We're 220 days wiser than we were 219 days ago. We're 220% stronger than we were 219 days ago. We're 220% better. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then we were 219 days ago. And we thank and praise God because he said the rainbow word is for you for today. Because all you have is today. And if you've been following us, you know that we start a stra- we start with God. That's our strategy. Before we do anything else, we start with God. 
So Matthew 6.33, write that down because this is the strategy God has given you as you start your day. This is not a routine. This is a relationship. So Matthew 6.33, um, we're going to go there because I'm going to read it to you. But it does say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his First seek, but first seek his kingdom. I read from the NIV version. Uh, I remember the King James version. <laughs> but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. So see, we're seeking something, not ours, not the pastors, not the neighbors, not your, not your mate, not your spouse. But seek first his kingdom, his being Jesus, and his righteousness, and all these things will be given unto you as well. Therefore, watch this. Do not worry about tomorrow. All I got is today. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Hey guys, if you're just now joining us, this is this is Harold Hill of Jr. Internet Guy. This is Christian Financial Wellness. This is what we teach. Who are we? Investment group partners. If you've never seen me before, or if you've seen me, know me, love me, like me, trust me, you realize that, hey, wait a minute, he used to sell cars. I sure did. But now what we're doing is we're allowing people to join a community investment club. It's called social investing. It gives you an opportunity to take your pennies and turn them into investable dollars. What we're teaching you is how to fish so you can feed your family for a lifetime we were talking about the different scenarios because once a week four times a month i air the podcast which is opening bell on my page i have a, on this particular page because i have two pages thank god for facebook because they say you have more friends than you normal no, than most people so they allow us to have multiple pages but this one has over four thousand followers friends family uh, loved ones and so we want to reach more people today part of our goal at investment group partners is to reach one teach one and bring one along guys we'll talk about the markets the markets have already been open an hour in 15 minutes. If you've never been here, we're talking about the stock market. We're talking about the U.S. markets, not the world markets. Um, and we invest in stocks. We invest in stocks together. And the reason why we do it together because it gives us one greater buying power. So we pull our pennies together. So instead of me just having a dollar worth of pennies, together we may have $500 worth of pennies. It gives us greater buying power. Number two, it it uh, it reduces and eliminates the risk that an individual investor may have trying to do this on their own. Because if you want to buy one share of, let's say, um, Tesla, well, the shares of Tesla just did a stock split. We've been buying Tesla. I think it's trading right now. And I'm looking it up. Hold on, guys. It's trading around two, two, $297 a share. So if you have $500, you can get one share. If you, if you have a full service brokerage account with Charles Schwab, you can get a fraction of a share. And so that, that, that means that it's at risk because you got one share. If that share, if that stock goes down, you're losing money. So your, 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 your $281 investment is, if it's worth 266, if it goes down to 250, it's now worth 250, but I spent 280. That's how stocks work. But when you do it as a club or you do it as a group, we can buy 20 shares. But we may buy other stocks instead of just one because what it does is reduce the risk. And instead of you spending $281, you may only invest $25. Because you've got into group portfolio club investing. Hey guys, today's word is consider the possibilities. Consider the possibilities. Every day God gives us a rainbow word. Day 20, why not Wednesday, Christian financial wellness. What is Christian financial wellness? It's exercising our money. We're learning how to be better stewards of God. Better stewards of God's time, God's money, and God's word. Glory be unto your name, God. Hey guys, we are talking about the stock market. We are talking about establishing, managing, and building the frame work of your family's financial future. We're teaching you how to be a better steward of God so you can uh, put away money for the future. You can establish some sort of generational wealth for your family. Our organization, Investment Group Partners, it is a ministry called by God. There are 18 of us. I represent uh, as the CEO and one of the co-founders, there are 17 other partners, board members, and other officers who join us. I just happen to be the face. The face because I'm loud. 
So I'm doing the work of an evangelist. Hallelujah. Glory be unto your name, God. We want to make certain that you get a complete understanding of what we do. We try to spend about an hour with you guys. We're 14 minutes, 22 seconds into the podcast. It's 749 on the West Coast, 1049 on the East Coast. If you're just now joining us, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Harold Elam Jr., Internet Guy from Investment Group Partners with a parent association for Community Investment Club. On Facebook, go into your search engine right now and type in Community Investment Club. If I have not invited you, I'm inviting you right now. It's an opportunity for you to follow us, see what we do. You don't necessarily have to get into group portfolio club investing. That's what we're talking about because we have three levels of membership. We have learn as you earn members. Doesn't cost you anything. You learn as you earn. How do I get started? Step one, find you some disposable income. You want to get started. You want to know how to do this on your own. Step one, find you some disposable income. For me, if anybody didn't know my story, it was no more Starbucks. So we decided to do no more Starbucks. Me, I'm not going to spend $8 a day. Now it's up to $10 a day, but $8 a day on Starbucks coffee. 8 times 7 was 56. 56 times 2 was about 12, 224 a month. That was my disposable income. That's what I invested. Once you find your disposable income, and it's going to be a sacrifice. Stop smoking. Stop drinking. Uh, stop going to the bar. If you live in Vegas, stop gambling. Just find your disposable income. Trust me, you're spending money in places that you shouldn't be. That's how you're going to find your disposable income. It takes a sacrifice. For me, $8 a day, no more Starbucks. Once you find your disposable income, step two comes in, determine how much of the disposable income, determine how much of the disposable income you just found from step one, you want to invest in how often. You have to make a commitment. Where's your commitment? You have to make a commitment. I want to share this video so if we get any questions, comments, or concerns. I want to talk with you guys this morning. So guess what? You're open. This is a Q&A session. Because when what? Once a week, four times a month, we go live on my personal page. So everybody gets an opportunity to see what we're talking about, to see what we're doing. Um, step three, you have to open your full service brokerage account. So step one, we're talking about getting started because I said there's three levels of membership um, that, that's part of Community Investment Club. Three levels. One first level is learn as you earn. That is a beginning level. That's that guy, that gal that don't quite know too much, but I want to get into investing. How do I get started? Step one, find you some disposable income. Step two, determine how much of the disposable income you want to invest and how often. Where's your commitment? You have to make a commitment to you. There's something I always tell our active investing members. That's another level of our membership status. I tell them never stop investing in you because our job here at investment group partners is to teach one reach one and bring one along so everything that we teach you we want we want to we want to reach we want to reach one so we reach one hey come here let me reach you then we teach you and then we bring somebody else along we want you to do the same once you learn how to do this and those are the characteristic traits of the bible once you draw somebody to christ you you introduce them to church you introduce them to jesus christ you introduce them to salvation you're supposed to stick with them did you not know that you're supposed to stick with them. We don't stick with the people we bought the church. Hallelujah. One of the things that I've, I've learned as a preacher, man, and even when I was pastoring, the people that I married, you know, I still check on them to make sure it was right, to make sure the union that I officiated over was, was righteous. Y'all better talk to me. And why not when you invite somebody to Christ, do you not look out for them? Check on them. Find out what they're doing. Hey, did you need anything? I don't care how high they grow up in the church still check on them it's only right it's only right it's almost like being a parent you stop checking on your kids just because your kids are 30 years old 40 years old 50 years old do you stop being a parent come on no glory be unto you let me share this information hey guys you're just now joining us i'm live 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 on my personal page what is he doing he's talking about community investment club he's talking about taking your pennies and turning them into investable dollars he's talking about you building a, a foundation for your family's financial future are you ready for this then we're called we're called and chosen righteous managing steward we were inspired by proverbs 13 22 write that down Write that down. We were inspired by Proverbs 13, 22. A good man, one translation. A righteous man, another translation. Um, an honorable man, another translation. Leaves an inheritance for their children's children. So the work I'm doing ain't even for Joshua and Shade. 
No, it's for their kids. Now, we're going to enjoy the fruits of our labor because that's what the word says. When we're talking about stewardship, God says you got to look beyond your children into your children's children. And the work that we do is so I can establish, manage, and maintain a framework for my family's finances. For, listen, guys, you can listen. When my dad died and I love my father, but all he left us was alone. That's it. It wasn't even no life insurance policy. He just left us alone. Now, I'm not telling you not to get life insurance. Please, go get some life insurance. But there is something more that God would have you to do. If not, he wouldn't have gave us Proverbs 13, 22. I'm going there. I'm going to read it from a different version. But Proverbs 13, 22. And everybody's not going to receive this because everybody's not a righteous managing steward. Everybody's not a good steward of God's time. Everybody's not a good steward of God's money. Everybody's not a good steward of God's word. A good person, this is a different translation, leaves an inheritance for their children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. Now, when we got inspired by Proverbs 13, 22, God said there's a three-part process inside of that scripture. The first part was position. You got to be in the right position. A good person, an honorable person, a righteous person, a good person, a righteous person, an honorable person, that means they're in the right position with God, which means that you cannot move out of position. I keep telling us we're called to a position of purpose. The position is great. I'm called to a position of a father, but the purpose outweighs the position. So when God calls you to a position of purpose, stay right there. You stay right there. See, everybody looks for something grandeur. They want to look at different things. But when God calls you to a position of purpose, stay right there. Because you have to then get the instructions of the purpose. You need them. So that's why it says the, the first part of the three-part process found in Proverbs 13, 22 is position. The second part is vision. You've got to see the end result expectation. God will take you to the end because he knows the beginning and the end. Even though you may have not even got started, this may be your first day hearing this. And you say, who is this guy? Well, my name is Harold Dillon Jr., the internet guy from Investment Group Partners. And you have to look at the end result expectations. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You've got to be able to see the end result expectation of what God is calling you to. Everybody says, well, you know my kids say when they go on, I want to be a doctor, I want to be a fireman, I want to be this, I want to be that. Well, as an adult, what you want to be? What's the end result expectation? Are you continuing to work and do what you've been doing and expecting different results? That's a sign of insanity. So there has to be something that God has called you to do. You may not know what it is, or maybe you do, and you're just too lazy to fulfill it. A lot of times, what's, what, what stops us is us. So you got to see the end result expectation. See, some of y'all are going to always be poverty-minded. Some of y'all are always going to have a ghetto mentality. Some of y'all are always going to be like crabs in a bucket. You're never going to leave this until you break the curse of poverty. And so Proverbs 13, 22 is the beginning of breaking the curse, beginning of breaking the, the cycle that you may have got caught up in. I had that, that same mentality. I get money in this hand, and it goes in this hand, and then out of my house. It's the same way in our communities. And listen, all, all the ethnicities leave the room for a second. No, I'm not prejudiced. I am partial. But black folks have a tendency not to let money cycle in our neighborhoods. It doesn't even stay but three hours. It may have grown since then. But normally, not even a full day does the dollar stay in the black community. Not even a day. Now, out of all the churches in our community, all the liquor stores, how many of us own them? A lot of us don't even own the building that we preach in as pastors and ministers in the community. So we paying somebody else to do God's work. Y'all better talk to me. Y'all ain't listening to me. Proverbs 13, 22. There's a three-part process. A good man, a righteous man, an honorable man. Three translations. Leaves an inheritance. Here's the vision. Leaves an inheritance for their children's children. My kids don't even have any kids yet. But I'm working for my grandkids that I may not never meet. I may not never meet. I don't know if that's a double oxymoron. That's something. For but I, I'm, I'm working for kids I may not meet. And so that's the vision. It's the vision. And God says you got to have faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But I need God to move in my favor. Well, how do you get God to move in your favor? Hebrews 11.6. Watch this. you got to have faith. Hebrews 11.6. I'm going to the faith chapter. Hebrews, you writing that down? Write it down. I told you when you start with me, you need a pen. And what else do you need? You need a Bible. You need the word of God. This is the foundation. And you need a book. 
a composition book. Dollar twenty five cent at the ninety nine cent store. Why? It's because it's no longer the ninety nine cent store. They changed the name. They call it need to call it the dollar twenty five cent store. So you need those three things to get started. And then we started talking about the different levels of membership because I said, well, what are we joining? You're joining Community Investment Club. It's just today I'm broadcasting from my page so I can reach more people because part of the mission that God has given me this is my assignment. Because I can see the end result expectation. My assignment is to reach one, teach one, bring one along. And those that God has attached me to, those that God has linked me with, 17 other people from investment group partners, you know what they, their job is? Reach one, teach one, bring one along. It's opening bell, guys, with Harold Dillon Jr., Internet Guy. We're 24 minutes, 45 seconds into the podcast. Markets have been open for almost an hour and a half. And the markets are mixed. They are mixed. Let me give you some updated information. Let me update my window right now. And we're looking for a recovery and a rebound. So we're looking for it. Let me say it. Let me say it again. We're looking for a rebound and a recovery. Because over the last, there are two days of losses, three days of losses, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, just money just gone, 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 gone. And losses don't always come because something's bad with the company. Losses come because of chatter, because of the catalyst in the news. So our goal as, as righteous managing stewards of God is to teach you how to earn money, how to get a return, regardless of what's going on in the market. And those are characteristic traits that God gives you anyway. Because I'm still supposed to smile regardless of what's going on in my life. I'm still supposed to be moving positive and, and looking for souls to win to Christ regardless of what's going on around me. Forget the people, the places, and the things. What do you believe? What are you doing? What are you standing for? Why are you smiling in the midst of all this? Because that's the characteristic trait we have. So the same thing that God asked me to do for my daily life, you think I'm not going to do for my investments? You think I'm not going to do for my business? You think I'm not going to do for my family? See, what happens is sometimes we eliminate God out of different areas of our life and in those areas of our life we're failing in we're failing because we think we need him here and not realize that we need him all everywhere y'all better talk to me opening bell with Harold Elam Jr. the internet guy from investment group partners I'm sharing this stuff out, guys. Join the conversation. Listen, if this is your first time seeing this podcast, hey, don't be dismayed. Don't be alarmed. Um, I've always been loud. You know me because I, I did the good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm still doing it, but I'm doing it better for God now. Hallelujah. We're teaching people how to be better stewards of God. And we use the platform, um, which is the stock market, as a way to get a return that God expects. God gives you an increase for reason and the increase is always not monetary but the, the monetary portion that's the money the cash the dead presidents it is a tool that we use to move God's ministry it is a tool we use to live in this earth until God comes back to get us which is sojourners passing through. But, but while we're here, we have to consider the possibilities with God. We're supposed to be the salt of the earth. Some of y'all ain't salt. Y'all just plain out pepper. Cayenne pepper. Y'all just too hot. <laughs> You're supposed to be the salt of the earth adding flavor to wherever you go. You're supposed to be the light of the world. But some of y'all are going chick. Let me cut my light off over here. Chick, uh, let me cut my light off over here. You're supposed to be the light of the world. We're supposed to be so caught up in Christ that people call us weird. The Bible says that we're peculiar people. Does the world see you as peculiar or are you just fitting in? You fitting in where the world is at. You doing everything. There was a song out and I use it in the scripture. I wrote a book and I have never published this book. And this was back in... I don't know if y'all can see this, it's kind of raggedy. And uh, Mother Diane said that that's the book. Get in where you fit in, Spiritual Gift Series, February 18th and 19th, 2005. But the, this is when I presented it to a, to a conference. My bishop had a conference, and I was invited to, to be the, the master of ceremony for the conference. It was a speaking engagement, um, and then what, we had other preachers there from different churches, and the goal was to teach them about stewardship. This was in 2005. So God had been given had been giving me the word, but talking about this book, get in where you fit in, and then I found out that one of the rappers got a song out, get in where you fit in. It um the guy from Oakland. Oh man, you know what? I used to listen to rap music. In fact, I used to be a rapper uh, back in my day. I wasn't a professional rapper. I was a professional neighborhood rapper. Y'all better talk to me. Uh, but uh, too short, too short had a song called "Get in Where You Fit In." Same. Uh, it, it has the same character. No, let me see. It almost has the same definition. Because when I say get in where you fit in spiritual gift series, it meant that you need to find out what God has called you to do. And you need to start doing it right then and there. 
You need to start doing If he called you to sing, start singing. Start singing. Right now, start singing. If he called you to preach, start preaching. Whether even if you're preaching to yourself, start preaching. Start writing out your sermons. Because what we're doing is we're waiting for the right time to get started. And we use that same characteristic trait in everything we do. What is the right time? Somebody told me, well, uh, I'm waiting for the right moment to start investing. Okay, you trying to time the market. You trying to listen to what the world says. And the world will keep you confused because as long as you're waiting, you're wasting time. Join the conversation. Let me put this out there. Did I copy the... Uh you know what? I got to copy the uh, the link. Hallelujah. Hey, guys, you're just now joining us. I'm Harold Dillon Jr., the Internet Guy from Investment Group Partners. We are the Parent Association for Community Investment Club. That's where we're inviting you today to join us. Join Community Investment Club. Doesn't cost anything to join. We were going over the different levels of membership. The first member, the, 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 the first level of membership is learn as you earn. Second level of membership is... Uh, self-investing members these are members that know how to do this thing or they've been doing it for a while maybe they're novelists some of them are experts some of them belong to financial firms but they're learning as they're earning what are they doing they're following our trades they're double dipping they're part of group and portfolio club investing but still the steps of getting started are the same we start we left off with step three and sometimes i go a little bit so that's why i tell you get a pen get a bible uh, and get your composition book so you can follow me. So there, there are six steps to getting started. We went over three. Step one, find you some disposable income. Step one. Step two, y'all ready for step two? Determine how much of the disposable income you found in step one you want to invest. And then how often you want to invest it. I found $5. Good. Then let's invest the $5. Step three, open your brokerage account. Full service brokerage account. Open your full service brokerage account. Can't miss it. Full service brokerage account. And the reason why you want a full service brokerage account is it's going to offer you more. A brokerage account, the platform that they're built on is like a bank account on steroids. Now, we recommend E-Trades. And before I leave or before you leave, look at the bottom and you will see that I have posted uh, something concerning E-Trade. And uh, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead, uh, complete the application, and fill it out and open your brokerage account. Every family, every family. Oh, I forgot. Other ethnicities. Come back, come back, come back, come back, come back. I apologize. Hallelujah. I had chased you out the room for a minute. But listen, every family should have a brokerage account. Doesn't cost you anything to open up the account. Don't have to put no money in it immediately until it's time to trade. Because our goal is to reach one, teach one, and bring one along. I want you to open it up for training. I want you to have it so I can teach you how to navigate through it. So I can teach you the, the benefits and the possibilities. That's today's word. We're in day 20 of Christian financial wellness. What is Christian financial wellness? We're exercising our money. Oh, let me get over there. Let me see. What do you mean? If I go, nope, this way, this way, this way, this way. Oh, this way. Hallelujah. We're exercising our money. Look at them guns. We're learning how to be better stewards of God's time. We're learning how to be better stewards of God's money. We're learning how to be better stewards of God's word. God's word. Let's start there. What is God's word? Well, you want to be a steward of God's word. That's the Bible. That means you have to read a little bit, study a little bit, meditate a little bit. Come on. And you get better and better at doing what? Studying a little bit, meditating a little bit, reading a little bit. And then you get better and better at understanding God's word. And all of that getting, get an understanding. Bible teaches us 2 Timothy 2.15. 2 Timothy 2.15. Study. To show that self-approved unto God, not unto man, not unto your spouse, not unto the neighbors, not unto the local church. Study to show that self-approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly means correctly dividing the word of truth. Because you're going to come up against some people that's going to challenge you. They're going to challenge you in all you do. I'm a car salesman. Challenge. I'm a lawyer. Challenge. I'm a teacher. Challenge. People will challenge you in all that you do. I'm going to start my own business. Challenge. I'm going to marry that girl. Challenge. Because people like to challenge people. Don't ask me why. I don't know. But I do know this. Study to show that self-approved unto God. A workman in need of not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. When you get the characteristic trait that you learn how to study, you do 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 due diligence. <laughs> you start looking for stuff. Your characteristic trait will take you through life because now even that we're investing in the stock market based on biblical guidelines guess what I do study I search stuff out I look for stuff I use my due diligence I do not just jump into anything you know my wife used to say you're gullible because I trust people you're gullible because you're always starting something but now and maybe I used to be I'm not saying she was wrong but you have to get better 
You have to get better. When, when you're doing something for God, you would want to get better. You should be encouraged to get better. You should be motivated and enthusiastic about getting better because you're not doing it for you. You've been called to do something. The problem is a lot of us don't know what we've been called to do. Hey guys, you just now joining us. This is Harold Dillon Jr., the internet guy. Consider the possibilities. Hallelujah. Consider the possibility. This is opening bell. This is opening bell, guys. Every morning we bring this podcast to you. It, it, we're, uh, the markets are open from 6.30 uh, Pacific Standard Time to 1 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. You have three hours if you're on the East Coast. It'll be 9.30 and 4 o'clock. The, they're open Monday through Friday. Saturday and Sunday the markets are closed. They will be closed on Labor Day, so we got a short... Um, we have a short week next week, but we want you to get excited about the possibilities you have with God because we want you to be able to take the uh, the pennies that you have, your disposable income, and turn them into wealth that can be generated for future for the future. That's it. For the future. Glory be upon your name, God. Hallelujah. Hey guys, listen, if you're just now joining us, I'm Harold Dillon Jr., Internet Guy. We're going over the the, the principles uh, of, of of stewardship based on what scripture tells us to do we're not necessarily teaching you how to trade stocks but we're using god's uh rules of engagement concerning stewardship in order to become a uh, better people or better traders better wealth builders uh because god tells us in proverbs 13 22 a good man a righteous man an honorable man leaves an inheritance uh, for their children's children and the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just glory be upon your name god glory be upon your name god um here we go right now so guys we're going to look at the market real quick um right now the stock market is trading down the dow jones is down 90 points um so it's 0.29 percent it's not that bad off the nasdaq is trading down 30 points or so 0.26 percent s p 500 is trading down 9.67 percent or 0.24 percent it's not bad what the market is doing here's your opportunity because we're bear market buyers take an opportunity if you are a self-investing member and do what buy the dip buy the dip this is your opportunity to buy the deal you go shopping you look for sales you look for see if the bread is on sale the milk is on sale well it's the same way when buying and trading stocks we look for companies after we've went through seven key indicators but we look for companies that's on sale so right now when i look at our portfolio the best trading stock of our portfolio was a purchase we did today in uwe in uwe nicodemus uriah uh, wealth Elijah Nicodemus Uriah Wealth Elijah New Wells Incorporated is open up at a dollar twenty cent. Previous close was yesterday, which was sixty three cent. Uh, it's trading up a hundred and forty five percent, a hundred and forty five percent. Now, why is that stock spiking so much? Well, we've already identified that this is a high risk stock. High risk means that the returns will be great, but it will not stay at 145%. Right now, it's trading up 145%. And let me give you an example because this is not a high price stock. This is still considered a penny stock that trades on the NASDAQ. New Wells Incorporated. The sector is healthcare. The exchange is NASDAQ. The industry is healthcare equipment and supplies. It's trading right now. And I'm going to refresh my screen. It's trading right now. At a dollar fifty-four cent, at a dollar fifty-five. If you buy this stock right now, that means you're paying a dollar fifty-five for this stock. But I want to show you the possibilities. The stock closed yesterday at sixty-three cent. That means it's trading up ninety-three cent. If yesterday at sixty-three cent, you decided you were going to buy two thousand shares of this stock, you would have spent twelve hundred and sixty dollars. But you got 2,000 shares of this stock. Right now, at the current price, those 2,000 shares will be worth one by five. five. We worth 3,100. So you would have made $1,100 already. And at this point, you can sell, take your profits, and sell just like at the at the casinos. You can take your profit, or you can hold on to the stock. Now, what we do is we teach you what to do next. Hallelujah. Because based on information is how you're going to make your decisions. This is why God tells us, watch this characteristic trait. In all of thy getting, y'all help me finish it. Get an understanding. In all of thy getting, get an understanding. 
So if you have the real-time, accurate information based on what God is telling you to do, how do I get this information? Due diligence, your study time. The same characteristic trait you use to study the Bible, you need to use to study before you get married. You need to use to study before you go to work. You need to study before you take your driver's test. This is the same characteristic traits. What's happening is we're not becoming the people that God is asking us to come. We're just reading and living out a fraudulent life because here's what we think we're supposed to be doing. But that's not what God would have you to do. See, first, you've got to make it personal. Sounds a little selfish. You've got to find out what God would have you to do. What God would have you to do. The little girl sing the song, This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Yeah, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, yeah, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. So that was her or him who was singing the song, they're letting their light shine. And until you get this right for you, how you going to help somebody else? See, the characteristic traits that God teaches us, they're, they're built on good stewardship. They're built so we can be good stewards, not of just God's money, but God's time. So when I'm looking at this stock, there are key indicators that we look for. So when we open up a full service brokerage account, that's why step three of the six part process of getting started as a member, step one, find you some disposable income. Step one, find you some disposable income. Step one, find you some disposable income. Step two, determine how much of the disposable income you found in step one, you want to invest and how often. That's step two. Step three, open your brokerage account. You need a full service brokerage account. Why? That's the platform. Same way when you get saved, you need a Bible. You need to be in a Bible teaching church and you need a Bible. You need your own word. You can sit and listen to the preacher. You can feel good. You can sound good. You can, you can amen all day, but you need to write down those scriptures. That's why you need a book. That's why you need a pen. When I go to church, I bring a Bible, a book, and a pen. Because I'm going to come home and I'm going to study. The same characteristic traits, they don't change. Because God is trying to turn you into something. You're a new person. So the things I used to do, I don't do anymore. And that's in every area of my life. Every area of my life. Are you guys ready for this? Are you truly and earnestly ready for this? Do you truly want more month than month? Do, <laughs> do you want more money than month? A lot of times we get caught up in these, uh, this uh, world psychological babble. We begin to follow the world. This is why um, so many successful people, financially successful people, they will tell you in their books, like Dennis Kimbrough. I think I have this book over here, Think and Grow Rich, A Black Choice. And I'm not advertising for Dennis Kimbrough. Uh, we just attended one of the same schools for us. Well, I went for a season. Hallelujah. But he's from uh, Morehouse. But Dennis Kimbrough wrote a book called Think and Grow Rich, A Black Choice. And inside of the book, just like Napoleon Hill, who originally wrote the book of Og Dingo, who wrote The Greatest Salesman in the World, each of these men have one thing in common. And that one thing is common that there's a greater spiritual power than you. They may not call them God, but they're telling you there's a greater spiritual power than you. And you as an individual have to find out and make your connection with that God. You have to make a connection. I'm not going to stop being a Jesus lover because I'm in the boardroom. I'm not going to stop hollering, hallelujah, because I'm in a meeting. Sometimes I shout out into me because it's good news. I'm excited about what God is doing. That's the highest praise I can give God. When I wake up in the morning, I scream hallelujah because I'm thankful that God gave me another day. He came by today to wake me up to do what? One thing, finish the work. He did not wake you up to have a pity party. He didn't wake you up to be moaning and groaning. He didn't wake you up to complain and be, un, uh, be unresponsive. No. If he didn't think you could finish the work, if he didn't need you, not need you, if he didn't want to encourage you today to do what you're supposed to be doing, he had no reason to wake you up. I don't know what y'all way to look at it. Hey guys, you just now joined this Harold Dillon Jr. Internet Guy. We're on step three. Open your brokerage account. Step four. Step four. Download your digital wallet. Because we do do we we do invest in cryptocurrency, and and guys, the investments that we make are pennies on the dollars. Our goal is to turn your pennies into investable dollars, turn your dollars into hundreds, hundreds into thousands, thousands into hundreds of thousands. 
It's disposable income. I don't need you robbing Peter to pay Paul because you're going to mess up the cycle. You're going to mess up what God has already given us. We've been doing this now for a year. And I watch portfolios, individual families' money grow. When you're invested, it's a growth thing. You can't look at it every day. You can, but it's not recommended. That's not where growth is. If you work on a job right now and have a 401k, how often do you look at that? You know they're investing your money. The goal, the goal is for you to find some disposable income. I got $10, Harold. Okay, great. Let me show you how to turn the $10 into $100. Let's take this $10 and let's put it in some cryptocurrency. Well, I got $50. Great. Let's buy some stocks. I just showed you a stock. Best trading stock of the morning. Amongst all of our portfolios. Wait for my screen to refresh. There's a dip. $1.52. $1.52. N-U-W-E. Uh, Nicodemus. Uriah. Wealth. Elijah. N is in Nicodemus, U is in Uriah, W is in Wealth, E is in Elijah, N U W E, New Wells Incorporated. It's a, it trades on the Nasdaq, dollar fifty two cent. A dollar fifty two cent. I showed you if you had bought two thousand shares, you would have spent twelve. You would have spent twelve hundred dollars. Was it twelve hundred? Let me go back to my calculator. Hold on a second. Twelve thousand. Times zero point it closed it last night at sixty three cent. You'd have spent twelve hundred and sixty dollars. You'd have already made thirty one hundred. Because the stock right now is trading at a dollar fifty two. So now your value, your twelve hundred and sixty dollars times that by two thousand shares is worth three thousand forty dollars. The value of your investment is now up three thousand times minus that. By your twelve hundred and sixty dollars, you made one thousand seven hundred and eighty dollars at a dollar fifty two cent a share, and that's a small stock. So we're telling you guys, when you're getting into this, we're doing this based on what God, how God would have us to do it. We don't know the companies to pick. God tells us to look for certain key indicators. So what we're doing is we're gathering information. And when we gather this information, before we make a decision to execute a trade, we have to meet seven key indicators. And these indicators include what exchange does it trade on? So we like the NASDAQ. Why do we trade on the NASDAQ? Because God revealed to us the NASDAQ serve two purposes. Where there are two or more, let it be so. Where there are two or more, Gathered in my name, there shall I be in the midst. So two or more. God sends us out in twos. So it serves two purposes. Where the other indexes, the other barometers, they don't serve two purposes. So NASDAQ was the place. So we look 80% of where we trade at is traded on the NASDAQ. 80% of where we invest our money is on the NASDAQ. So the first thing we look for, first key indicator. Inside of our full service brokerage account, what is part three of a six part process of getting started? Step one, well, step one, find you some disposable income. Step two, determine how much of the disposable income you found in step one you want to invest and in how often. Step three, open your brokerage account. Inside of our full service brokerage account is where we gather the information on the companies we're going to buy. On, in our full service brokerage account is where we execute our trades. Inside of our full service brokerage account is like a bank account on steroids. We can buy mutual funds, stocks, bonds, options. We can fund our house. We can get an ATM card. We can have a bank account, private banking account. We can have a savings account. This is a bro brokerage account is having a bank account on steroids. Every family should have a brokerage account. Step four, download your digital wallet. Now, we recommend crypto.com because it's simple. And the one thing that God has encouraged us to constantly do as we're teaching is to keep it simple. So we use the KISS rule. Keep it simple, saints. <laughs> keep it simple, saints. Hey, guys, you're just now joining us. We're 47 minutes, 57 seconds into the podcast. This is Why Not Wednesday. Why Not Wednesday. This is day 20 of Christian Financial Wellness. Uh, today's word is consider the possibilities. Let me give you a couple of scriptures. Consider the possibilities. Matthew 19:26. But Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. It's an opportunity for you to do more for your family. My, God, my only job today is to help you establish, manage, and maintain the framework of your family's financial future to encourage you enough to get started.
to encourage you enough to get started with investing, to encourage you enough to do something different for your life. Because I know you're tired of going to payday loans. I know you're tired of being broke. And guys, this is your opportunity to do it on your own. Three levels of membership, self-investing members still need the same six steps. We're on step four, downloading a digital wallet. Active investing members still need the same six steps. Active investing members are those members who decide to pool their funds together. And we use a resource called Group Portfolio Club Investing. The world calls it social investing. It's where you, it's a club. This is an investment club. We get a chance to share information, collaborate, communicate. We learn together, earn together, grow together. This is what we do together. Out of the 850 members that Community Investment Club have, about 150 of them are active investing members. Those are the ones that decided to let's get together and let's do this. We're inviting you today. Open enrollment starts tomorrow. Hallelujah. <laughs> this is why once a, once a week we come live because we want to invite more people to come in and, and, and see what we do. Follow the results. Three types of membership. I want to be a self-investing member. That's great. You still have to uh, find you some disposable income. Step two, you have to determine how much of the disposable income I found I want to invest and in how often. Step three, you want to open up a full service brokerage account. Does not have to be E-Trade. I'm going to put E-Trade at the bottom. It can be Charles Schwab, full service. It can be TD Ameritrade, full service. It can be Fidelity, full service. It can be Robinhood, full service. These are full service brokerage accounts. Some of y'all have brokerage accounts that don't even know it because you got 401k. You got retirement plans. Guarantee you most of your jobs use Fidelity. So you already have access. So you may have a mutual fund account, but they don't open up a brokerage account. It's the platform. So we want you to have a full service brokerage account because in that platform, you can do so many different things. You can literally manage your money. Remember when we started, my job as the CEO, as the co-founder, and as the minister of all this is to reach one, teach one, and bring one along. But my job, that individual one, is to teach you how to manage, establish, and maintain the framework of your family's financial future derived from Proverbs 13.22. You want to build an inheritance? You want to leave generational wealth to your family? To your children's children? Proverbs 13.22, a good man, a righteous man, an honorable man, a good woman, a righteous woman, an honorable woman, leaves an inheritance for their children's children and the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. We just chose the stock market in order to do it, but the principles still apply. You can choose to sell real estate, but the principles still apply. You can choose to do Forex, but the principles still apply. You can choose to sell t-shirts on the corner at the swap meet, but the principles still apply. You want to be successful at this, you got to do it through God. You got to do it in the, with the rules of engagement that God has laid forward and revealed to us. We do this every day, all day, without fail, no exceptions. I don't stop being saved because I'm at work. I don't stop being saved because I'm online. I don't stop being saved because I'm, I'm at the casino. I don't stop. When you start eliminating God out of your life, you start eliminating the possibilities. Let me give you another scripture. Joshua 1 and 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Today's word is consider the possibilities. Consider the possibilities. Hallelujah. This is how God works through us. He wants you to believe and know that he is. Hebrews 11.6. That's where we were going one time. We never even got there. Hallelujah. We were talking about the three-part process found in Proverbs 13.22. Part one, position. Part two, vision. Part three, the assignment, the work. But well, watch this. Part two is the vision. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. You've got to know that God exists. So that's that position. Once you're in that position with God, you realize here's my relationship. I've got a relationship with God. This ain't a routine. This ain't something I'm doing because everybody else is doing. I'm not conformed. Opposite of success is not failure. It's conformity. Stop being conformed to the ways of this world. The Bible tells us where in Romans 12 2. I'm giving you this so you can go back and you can elaborate. Romans 12, 2. Do not conform. I'm reading from the NIV version or NIV translation. Um, do not conform to the pattern of this world, comma, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Change your mind. Change your mind. Change your mind. Change your mind. 
then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will for who? For you. For you. This is all about getting started for you. This is all about doing something for you. I told you at one point, you have to seem like it's, it, you're being uh, selfish. And I would have to say it, it, it is a form of selfishness because I need you to be concerned about you. Because you can't get this, you can't help me until you help you. You can't help you until you get in there with God. You stop waiting for the right time. Right now, right now, right now, right now is the right time to get started. Your procrastination is killing your family. Your procrastination is killing the wealth opportunities that you have. Your procrastination is stopping you from doing what God has called you to do. That you procrastinated. Hey guys, I'm looking for any questions, comments, concerns. Listen, I, I love each and every one of you guys. But I, I have to encourage you to want to do more for your family. H how do I do this, Harold? Well, I'm telling you, start with your penny. Find you some disposable income. Step one. Once you found this disposable income, I told you for me it was no more Starbucks. So I don't drink the $8 coffee, I drink the $2 coffee. So I took the $8 a day and I invested in the stock market. I determined from the money I found how much I'm going to use. My commitment was to $224 a month. That was it. Disposable income. I was going to spend it anyway. I wasn't going to ever see it again. Why not put it someplace where it works for me? And God is looking for a return. Matthew 25. Just so you know. So you want to start there too. Because God's looking for a return. He gave you new life. He's looking for a return. He gave you a new car. He's looking for a return. 25 and 14. Start there. Matthew 25 and 14. And you'll see God is looking for a return. Um, step three. Open your brokerage account. You need a full service brokerage account. Step four. Download you a digital wallet. I'll put the links on the bottom. So if you're watching this live, you'll have them after the podcast. If you're watching this after the live podcast, they're in the bottom. Look down below. Comment below. You need to talk to me. Text me. Tweet me. You need more information. Text me your email address and I'll send you over more information. Even me or one of our employees. We got an employee. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're growing. I supposed to have been introducing him a month ago. Well, he just became full time. He had to go through a five week training program. That training program is to make certain that he can keep up with what we do based on what God would have us to do. And he had to be saved. Y'all better talk to me. Uh, he had to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit. And so we're going to be introducing him tomorrow, September 1. And we thank and praise God for our only and new employee. The rest of us are volunteers. <laughs> the other 17 of us, another 18 of us are volunteers. But we have one paid, uh, being paid employee. Hallelujah. Glory be unto your name, God. Um, step four, download your digital wallet. Step five, learn how to navigate through your digital wallet and your brokerage account, your full service brokerage account. And that's what we teach. Guys, these podcasts are not for me just to run my mouth. And these podcasts are for you to receive information, information that you can use for today. That's why God gives us a rhema word. Remember, I first started you off with a strategy that God gives you. Matthew 633, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God. So this is your strategy of starting your day. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will take care of itself. There's enough evil in today. That means something, there's a chance something may happen. You need to consider the possibility. After you went to Matthew 6, 33 and 34, you want to go to Ephesians 6, 10 and read through. Because Ephesians 6, 10 is still part of your strategy for today. For today. I ain't worried about yesterday. It's gone, 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 gone. I can't worry about tomorrow because I'm not promising more. All I got is today. Are you living life to the fullest today? Today. That's all you got is today. Why are you moaning? Why are you groaning? Why are you complaining? You got today. God gave you today. Hallelujah. He gave you the gift of life. Forget everything else. He gave you the gift of life. Hallelujah. He gave you an opportunity to do more right now. But you need a strategy. And that strategy, so you can win today. Watch this. Finally, I'm in Ephesians. 6 and 10. I left Matthew 6.33 and 34 and in, in Matthew 6.34 in there it said there's enough evil in today. So wait a minute. There's some evil in today. I got to be ready for that. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Again, in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. Put on the full armor of God. Not the armor of man. Not the armor of your wife. Not the armor of your husband. Not the armor of the neighborhood. Put on the full armor of God so you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. They're coming. The devil's schemes are coming. The Bible says he sits like a roaring lion waiting to pounce. 
waiting. So we got to have a strategy. You got to be ready for this. You got to be ready for this. You waking up in a pity party. You ain't ready for this. You waking up moaning and groaning. You ain't ready for this. You ain't ready for this. You talk a good game, but you got fraudulent activity. You talk a good game. Oh, I'm a king. I'm a queen. You talk a good game, but you don't operate under the kingdom principles. Where's your kingdom mindset? Because <laughs> it sounds good, but where's your kingdom mindset? Are you doing what thus saith the Lord concerning you and stewardship? I'm still in Ephesians. Verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, and it tells us again, and, and I, I thank God, man, man, because the Holy Spirit just been encouraging me. He said, he said, show, tell, repeat. And I remember show and tell when I was in third grade. Show, tell, repeat. Watch God repeat. Verse 13, therefore put on the full armor of God. Verse 10, put on, verse 11, put on the full armor of God. Verse 13, therefore put on the full armor of God. Verse 11, put on the full armor of God. Verse 13, therefore put on the full armor of God. Show, tell, repeat. Show, tell, repeat. Same way. Same things that God is telling you to do right here in order to save your soul. You have to use those same principles inside of your daily journey. This is why it's called Christian financial wellness. It's a journey. God is changing you into a person. He's not building some sort of routine. He's building a relationship because these are the characteristic traits you're supposed to have anyway. Where's your stewardship trait? Where's the characteristic role you're supposed to be playing in life? Who are you showing? Who? What light are you cutting on? Woo! Anyway, guys, second best trading stock. Markets are trading down. Let me refresh my screen before I open me, put my foot in my mouth. If you just now joined us, this is Harold Dillon Jr., Internet Guy. This is Harold Dillon Jr., Internet Guy. We're waiting for up. Markets are trading down. Dow Jones is down about 0.22%. Not bad. NASDAQ is trading down 0.09%. Not bad. S&P 500 trading down 0.11%. So the markets are, are fluctuating. They're doing their best to recover. We want them to recover. We want them to rebound and then recover. Because uh, Friday, we lost equity. Monday, we lost equity. Uh, Tuesday, we lost equity. So we're looking for a rebound. Rebound means I'm going to get back to where I was. Rebound means I'm going to get back to what belongs to me. Y'all like rebounds? The guy in the basketball game, he rebounds. I'm not a big sports fan. I like watching this, the, the, the playoffs. But rebound is a word they use in basketball because that means he, he, he shot the ball. They missed it, but he got the rebound. <laughs> Woo! He got the rebound. So he has another opportunity. So when we get the rebound, we want the stocks to rebound. We want the market to rebound. So when we're looking at the markets, we look for key indicators, guys. We don't just pick and choose and we don't follow. I don't look to CNBC for answers. I don't look to Bloomberg for answers. I don't look to the Wall Street Journal or Investors Daily for answers. I look to them for information. I look to them for information. Because in all of my getting, I have to get an understanding. You need to understand what you're doing before you get into it. This is the reason why we have training. The training doesn't cost you anything. Ain't no books to download. Ain't no CDs you got to buy. Ain't you got to wait no Amazon delivery. Ain't no credit card information you got to supply. All you got to do is show up. Show up with an ink pen. Show up with a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, we get you one. 910, excuse me, 702-901-9128. That's my telephone number. Text me, tweet me, message me. Right here on Facebook, put a message at the bottom. So we can get you out of the Bible and you want a composition book. Guys, we're looking at the best trading stocks of our portfolio. For y'all that don't know, we have seven different neighborhood managed portfolios. Seven. Seven neighborhood managed portfolios that we invest in. Now, what we do is we combine these portfolios because we're a club. We can You can join one club, two club, or all seven clubs. Doesn't any matter. We have seven neighborhood managed group portfolios. Inside of these managed group portfolios are at least seven different companies we invest in. So 7 times 7 is 49. So at any given day, we have 49 different companies we invest in. Why do you choose 7? Because the Bible tells us to choose 7. 7 or 8. Our minimum is 7. And we've noticed through through what? Through 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 uh, trials and errors, through through um, through life itself, through experience, when we don't have 7, something's wrong with that portfolio. It doesn't even trade right. Even regardless, even when the market's up, because we're not following instructions. You have to be obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice. God tells you to do something. And a lot of y'all speak that God said, but you ain't doing it. Woo! Mm, that was powerful. Thank you, Holy Spirit. A lot of y'all speak about what God said, but yet still you're not doing it. God said to marry her. Okay. Now you want to divorce her. 
<laughs> God said, <laughs> God said, go to this church, but now you want to leave. God said for me to preach the word, but now you're being quiet. God said for me to be an evangelist, but now you don't want to evangelize. God said for me to prophesy, but now you want to prophesy. God said for me to teach, but now you're not teaching. A lot of y'all fraudulent. Fraudulent! Danger! Danger! Man in danger! I like that because I used to watch this show called Lost in Space. And Will Robinson was the kid, but Will Robinson had this robot. And the robot, whenever something would come up, he would go, Danger! Danger! Will Robinson! Danger! Man in danger! I'm going to just start doing that in the middle of church. I'm going to start doing that in the middle of the street. When I find out that you've been saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, yet still you with a woman that ain't your wife. Danger! Danger! Man in danger! Or you in the bar drinking. You know what you're doing? Danger! Danger! You smoking on every Danger! Danger, danger. <laughs> Glory be upon your name. You got to laugh, man. Sometimes I laugh to keep from crying. Hallelujah. There's so much going on in the world right now, guys. All we can do at sometimes is pray. That's all we can do is pray. The Bible says that the infectual fervent prayers of the righteous man, a good man, a righteous man, an honorable, which means I'm in the right position with God. Uh, the, the, listen. The infectual fervent prayers of a righteous man avail of much. That means I'm in the right position with God. He hears me. And so sometimes all we can do is pray, guys. All we can do is pray for the world that we live in. There's so much going on right now. We're living in the last days. I know you heard that before, 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 before. But it's true. <laughs> Doesn't stop it from being true. Just because you don't want to hear it no more. Sin is sin. Just because you don't want to see it do it no more. Sin is sin. Hallelujah. You don't want to hear him talk about it, but sin is sin. If you steal a nickel, you stole. It's sin. If you kill a man, you stole. God don't have a, 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 a priority of sin. There's no level. You, you, a sin is sin. Our goal is to be better in Christ. I, I can't be better in, in Rashonda. She's my wife. I love her. And the Bible tells me what to do for my wife. Love your wife like Christ loved the church. And all I can think about is how many times God has forgiven me. Y'all better talk to me this morning. Hallelujah. Hey, guys, we're talking about the best trading stocks of the morning. Uh, we are, well, how long are we in this broadcast? We're one hour, five minutes, and 44 seconds into the broadcast. Markets are trading down. Um, now, we, we're, we're, we're maintaining some equity positions. Right now, our portfolios are trading down 0.18%. The NASDAQ has just turned green. We're expecting a rebound today in a recovery. 80% of what we invest in is invested on the NASDAQ. NASDAQ. Why the NASDAQ? Because the NASDAQ serves two purposes for us. They serve as a barometer, a measuring tape, a thermometer, however you want to call it. They do measurements. And it also serves as an exchange for us. An exchange where we can buy and sell our stocks. Best trading stock of the morning is in you W E trading at a dollar sixty up one hundred fifty four percent. Next best trading stock of the day is M O B M O B like mob Mary Opadiah Bartholomew mob N O B. It is a Chinese stock. It's Mobilecom Ltd. It is trading up twenty seven percent. Open at three oh six. Previous close was two forty four. The volume is thirty two million. It is a Chinese stock trading on the Nasdaq. Ding 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 ding. Recommended by with caution. Why caution, Harold? Because it's an emerging market stock. It's a Chinese stock. We like these stocks. These stocks can earn you money, but they're not good investments. They're tradable stocks. We believe that there's two ways to buy uh, in the market. We believe there's a tradable stock and that there's an investable stock. This is a tradable stock. We will buy this stock. We will hold this stock as a high risk stock. Once we make some money, we'll get out. So you have to have an entry strategy and an exit strategy. Our job is to teach you these strategies. It's the same principles you're using in your life, guys. Once you begin to see how God opens up a door of opportunity concerning stewardship, you'll be able to apply, implement these particular characteristics characteristic traits into the market. Doesn't matter what you're doing, you'll be able to apply and implement these characteristic traits into your business, into your ministry. Because stewardship is stewardship. You still have to do what thus saith the Lord. We keep separating God into his parts of our life. He has to be part. every area of your life should encompass the Lord. Every area of your life should encompass the Lord. Best, second best trading stock of the morning, MOB. MOB, Mary Opadiah 
Bartholomew. Hallelujah. We want to go to number three. The number three best trading stock of the of the morning. It's not afternoon anywhere yet. No, it's not quite yet. Nine o'clock rings in the uh, the noonday bell. Nine o'clock Pacific Standard Time is twelve o'clock Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be lunchtime on Wall Street. The Nasdaq has just turned green. The bulls are coming. The bulls are coming. The bulls are coming. Hallelujah. Third best trading stock of the morning, BXRX. I like this company. It's a healthcare company. I did my research on the company. Stock is 34 cents. I kept buying it. I got you know, a hedge fund move on this stock for the group. Healthcare. But let me tell you why I like this stock. They did a $6 million IPO offering. Uh, it was a, a, a public offering of $6.2 million. They, they, uh, somebody's running by the stock for $0.52. Cent. So I said, well, we're getting at $0.30. Cent. We can make $0.26 cent for every share we own. So guys, hear me out on this particular stock. So it's at $0.31, $0.32 cent right now. $0.32. Cent. So if you have if $500 is your, let's say you have $500. Harold, I found $500. That's my disposable income. I won it at the lottery. I won it somewhere. Uh, boss gave me a bonus. On this particular stock, I just want to give you an example. Okay? Um, this particular stock, if you have $500, you could buy 1,400 shares. 1400 shares all right that would cost you 500 bucks if the stock just goes to where they want it to go they want it to be at 0.56 is what they're offering they're making a public offering that means eight, you make 323 dollars so now your five hundred dollars is worth eight twenty three i want you to get an understanding this is why i'm using the analogy of the value equity so i got five hundred dollars so you're telling me my five hundred is worth eight twenty three yes because at any time in the stock market, based on where you are, you can sell that and take your profits. Our goal is to show you how to find those companies based on the information we gathered looking at key indicators. That means you make $323 today. So now, if you do what God says in Ecclesiastes 11, 1 and 2, Ecclesiastes 11, 1 and 2, and you want to have seven or eight different trades, so if you make $323 per trade, and you got seven, 323 times seven, you make it $2,200 a day. You only trade five days a week, so you make it $11,000 a week. You got 52 weeks in a year, you make it a half a million dollars a year. Guys, why are you not doing? We're late to the game, but God says that the first shall be last and the last shall be first we may be late to the game so god is opening up a door of opportunity because guess what when he gets to the third part which is the assignment of the three-part process found in proverbs 13 22 let me repeat that a good man a righteous man an honorable man a good woman a righteous woman an honorable woman leaves what an inheritance for their children's children watch this here come the assignment here come the work the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the just you don't just go knock on the center door and say Hey, Mr. Center Man, give me the money you owe me. No, this ain't even a real allocation of wealth. No, it's you. God has given you the revelation. What's the revelation? Proverbs 13, 22. A good man, a righteous man, get in position. A good man, a righteous man, an honorable man, get in position. A good man, a righteous man, an honorable man, get in position. Leaves an inheritance. Here's the vision. Here's the end result expectation. Here's Habakkuk 2, 1 and 2, 2 and 3. Habakkuk, write the vision, make it plain. You have to see the end result expectation. So, so now I'm in position, I see the vision, I see the end result, somebody got to do the work. So once you can do the work, once you can do the work, God will begin to open up doors of opportunity. That's why I said today's word, consider the possibilities. Consider the possibilities. He'll begin to reveal to you, this is how you're going to become wealthy. I just showed you off a of penny stock, something that costs 34 cents, making a $500 investment. How you can do it seven different times based on God's complete number, you got a half a million dollars in a year. Five hundred eighty-seven thousand eight hundred sixty dollars. Y'all better talk to me. The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. You have to be in the area where they are, but you don't have to be who they are. You don't have to become what they are. When God sent the spies out there to look at the land of milk and honey, the promised land, the land that His people were going to move to, they came back with a bad report. One seen the possibilities. One. And what happens is we're so afraid because the enemy has put the spirit of fear has come upon us. Well, the spirit of fear is not of God. Anytime that you get a little fearful about doing something, you need to get excited. Because that means that the enemy knows that the possibilities God has in you are great. Why would the enemy send the spirit of fear upon you unless it was great? The possibilities are great. You're missing your opportunity because you have allowed the enemy to overtake you with the spirit of fear. 
And that's just some of us. The other rest of y'all are lazy. Just flat out lazy. And, and you let your flesh get in the way. Listen, I pushed myself yesterday. So um, I'm going to say this because we're one hour, 13 minutes, 19 seconds into the podcast. We had a couple of brothers who wanted to get into investing. They said, Harold, what do I do? Um, and I asked the Lord. I said, well, let, let's pray about it. Let's find out what we can do. Because I didn't want to just come up with the obvious answers. You know what I mean? The obvious answers. Obvious, get a job. Get another job. Work three jobs. Do this. Do this. And uh, they said, well, we've listened to the podcast. We heard you, man. But we, we don't have the disposable income. So the first brother, I told him, I said, listen, I used to do ride share. So why don't you do ride share? So I sent him over a link, a link. Yeah, uh, and, and he said, I don't want to use my car because you sold me my car. I said, I sure did. You, you'd be killing your car. And so I sent him over a link for Lyft, for Lyft, the ride share company Lyft. And I said, I'm going to send you this link over, fill it out. And once you get approved, you're going to invest 200 bucks and you're going to need it for your license. It's going to cost you 200 bucks. You got to get a state license. Um, and you're going to spend another 70 bucks on getting a county license. So you have two licenses. You can incorporate it if you want. It's up to you. You can call it whatever you want, but you're going to have these two licenses. So he did that, um, and he signed up. The first week, um, and I'm giving you real numbers, as accurate as I possibly can. The first week, he made $1,150, all disposable income. His car cost him $334 because I sent him a link over where he can get the car. So he so it's not his car, but he can use the car for his personal use. Doesn't matter. Um, so we're going to minus the $344. That left him $806. $806. So he had $806 of disposable income. Y'all follow me so far. Then I told him, I said, well, uh, you definitely want to take out um, 20% uh, for taxes. Because you, you're going to end up paying taxes if you decide to stick with this. So we're going to write down to 806. Because I want to show you guys where we are. So he took the 1100 1100 And he times it by 20%. Another $220. So we got 220 And we got 344 That's paid for the car. The car includes insurance. That includes insurance. That includes everything but his gas. 6 with 564 So we're going to 1100 Minus his five sixty four. That left him with five hundred thirty six dollars of disposable income. I said, "What did you spend in gas this week?" He said, "Well, I had the uh, gas up um, two times. Two times. He had the gas up two times. Um, so, and that's for the week. For so he had maybe a good car. So that was a hundred dollars. That left him with four hundred thirty six dollars of disposable income." Now, some people that are into investing or teaching about investing, they call that passive. $436 a week, and he did this part-time. $436 a week he cleared. He see, he's saving, wait a minute, listen now, he's saving $220 for taxes. He may not need it all, but he put the $220 away in taxes. He, uh, he paid for a car, so he's got another car that he's not paying for, not putting any miles on the car that I sold him. Um, so he's cleared $436. $436. Every week, times that by 52 weeks, at the end of the year, he's going to have $22,672 worth of dis disposable income. He's invested it all. Now, that's just him. Now, this second gentleman, same thing. I sent him a car, uh, the link to get a car. Um, and he just said, I, I just need some extra money. He decided to do it full time. Full time. This said, This guy was doing $2,100, $2,100, same deductions, with exception of gas, minus $344, um, minus $400 for his taxes, y'all follow me, um, and minus, he was doing $200 a week in gas, minus $200 for gas. He's clearing $1,156 of disposable income. How many of y'all making $1,156 a week? Doing what you like doing. Turn off when he want. Eat when he want. Go where he want. Enjoying his family when he want. Wife want to go somewhere. Not a problem. Let me turn off. Eleven hundred fifty-six dollars a week. He clearing. Times that by fifty-two. This is disposable income. Sixty thousand dollars a year. He's investing now. Sixty thousand dollars a year. At the end of a five-year plan. Right. At the end of five years. Let me just give you this. At the end of five years, we're going to times that by five. He's going to be done invested three hundred thousand dollars into the marketplace. If he did nothing else but get the minimum. The minimum return, the minimum return from the market that the market offers you, that's 10%. I think, no, actually it's 12%. Times that by 12%, he's going to have an additional $36,000. Now, based on what we do, 
based on, on, on the combination, based on how we do things, based on what the Bible has told us, Ecclesiastes 11, 1 and 2, you got to go there to understand what I'm talking about. But based on our average return, our average return is 250%. Y'all better talk to me. 250 that's our average return because we do it listen when you do group portfolio club investing i need you to understand that you eliminate you you reduce and eliminate the risk you can invest less and get a higher return so our average return is 225 percent. everybody eats from that average return everybody but you only get you get your 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 return based on what you put in so watch this. This guy is doing three hundred thousand dollars a year. So at the end of his first year, times two hundred twenty-five percent, he'll see six hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars plus his principal. That's a millionaire. That's a millionaire. He's 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 banking on millionaire status after one year. One year. Now let me tell you guys something. You said, well, that's a lot of money. He's kicking it out. I don't understand it. Well, he was looking for disposable income. I gave him a way to make disposable income. But let me tell you this. You've been doing it for your cars. I sell cars. And you forgive me for putting you in a position where that car is not worth anything. But I need a car. You do. You, you, you honestly do. But let me tell you what you've been doing. For 72 months, and we figured this out. Uh, again, and when we sold my wife Hyundai, yeah, we sold a Hyundai. We got two other cars, but we're on a subscription program. Subscription, because I'm, I'm tired of putting into a dis, uh, depreciating asset. I don't even such thing. That's an oxymoron. There's no such thing as a depreciating asset. Can't be an asset. It's depreciating. Anyway, average car payment right now. You look it up. Average used car payment right now is seven hundred dollars. <laughs> I said the same thing. Your insurance is a buck fifty if you're old. So you had eight hundred and fifty dollars. You spend eighteen hundred dollars a year on on uh, uh, maintenance. So buck buck fifty. So that's another buck fifty. And you're spending what two hundred dollars a month on fuel now. So two hundred dollars. So you're spending twelve hundred dollars a month to keep your car. That's just one car. If you got two, you're twenty four hundred. But let's start with one. You got one car. Twelve hundred dollars. Most of y'all got 72 month loans. Times that by 72. At the end of 72 months, you put at $86,400 into that car. How much do you think that car is worth? Rashawn and I did the same math. We did the same math. Listen to me. We sold our car. We sold our car after because it was paid for. 2013 Hyundai Sonata. 2013 Hyundai Sonata. 186,000 miles, air steel, blue coal, but it need about $1,200 worth of work. And I told them in the ad, $2,000. There you go. We put $86,000 into a car to get back $2,000. <laughs> what kind of return is that? That's the same thing everybody else is doing. And why we do it? Because we're conformed. 10% of the world doesn't do that. So it's a subscription program. That's another time for another dollar. But guys, listen, I'm talking to you today because I want to show you how to establish, manage, and maintain the framework of your family's financial future. God already has a plan. He already has a set of rules or regulations that we need to be following. And we're doing it in areas of our life, but we're not doing it in all the areas of our life. We're not. We're doing it on Sunday, you Sunday Christian. We're doing it on Wednesday, you Wednesday Christian. We're doing it on Friday night Bible study, you Friday night Bible study Christian. Well, God wants you to do this all the time, every day, all day, without fail, no exceptions. These are principles. These are characteristic traits that they're supposed to be part of who you are. Because we're supposed to become a new person. We're supposed to be a new person. Do y'all understand me? A new person. Glory be unto your name, God. Hey, guys, we're one hour, 22 minutes, 15 seconds into the podcast. This is Harold Hill, the Internet Guy. This is opening bell. The markets are, let's see if they turn green. See if they turn green. Hallelujah. Because it's almost uh, noon. Lunchtime on Wall Street. And I got to give updates to the, to the members. If you're an active investing member, hey, you guys, opening up. The markets are trading up. Hallelujah. Markets are trading up. We're going to have a rebound. 
and then the recovery. A rebound, and then the recovery. Hey, guys, this is Harold Dillon Jr., Internet Guy from Investment Group Partners. I enjoyed my time with you. Hey, look, we do have After the Bell. After the Bell starts around one, 2 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, which will be 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, but it's going to be on our group page, so you got to go there. Community Investment Club on Facebook. That's where it's going to be broadcast from. We do it later, then we share it all over the world. Today, I'm broadcasting from my page. This is Investment Group Partners. I'm Harold Dillon Jr., Internet Guy, your friend, your your brother in Christ, hallelujah.